okay so hi guys today we have vignesh natarajan in our channel and uh, he he going to speak about his work his experience and the current situation in the animation industry in india as well as uh, all around the globe so here we have some questions i will be asking him and he will be answering uh, uh, to the, to those questions so let's start the session how are you vignesh hey manoj how are you man i'm great okay so let's start the session yeah sure go okay so we just want to know like more about yourself so can you introduce yourself yeah so um as you already mentioned my name is vignesh i um you know i've been in this industry as an animator for say more than 10 years now uh-huh. and uh, mostly i've been working on uh, tv series and uh, dvd movies and sometimes games um and also at the same time you know advertisements and all so uh, it's a it's a mixed bunch of what i do mm-hmm. until now and uh, right now i am currently trying to step into the education industry so um, you know because of the covid and all um, i had to take uh, i mean i took a break and then covid happened uh, incidentally i have no idea it's going to happen so i took a break and then you know like uh, covid came in and you know like offset my plans so i had to you know like get into get into um teaching for okay. a while so you know like uh, uh, that's that's something that coincidentally happened i used to be doing that i am mean, i mean i used to do that before as well <laughs> but never as like you know like one of my main gig or something it was always you know to help out someone uh, to help out a friend or something like that um you know uh, take a few classes here and there you know prepare some materials prepare some syllabus and all that stuff but now i'm i'm like more into full time and you know like coaching people and uh, basically getting into the the business of education uh, i mean and the cg education basically uh, the animation front so uh, that's what my focus is as of now so i guess that sums up about what i've been doing and what i have done till now yeah man fantastic like uh, i was seeing your linkedin comments and all initially mm-hmm. from there i used to uh, get to know there is like vignesh and who is some kind of expertise in animation and uh, i used to read your comments and i used to learn from that so and then later you started one youtube channel and you started to teach uh, animation and all those review kind of things in your youtube channel mm-hmm. and i got impressed and uh, i mean i have some subscribers who wants to learn i mean who wants to know more about animation and the uh, uh, also the industry how uh, job opportunities are there in india or not and all those stuff so mm-hmm. i thought like let's discuss with you and uh, speak about the current job market and how uh, i mean any tips and tricks which you could share with uh, the persons or the, with the people who wants to learn animation so Uh, that's what that's where i got to know okay about you and thought of interviewing you for my channel okay. so uh, yeah we will move to the next question so yeah, like sure, according sure. To, yeah according to you what is the current situation of the animation industry like uh, now mm-hmm. after this pandemic everything is shifting towards cg kind of works because there is no shoot happening anywhere so according to you what is the current situation of the animation industry is it booming or is it the same situation before like uh, covid was happening okay um uh yeah so manoj um the situation in the in the uh, animation industry so uh, let's take a look at you know uh, what what people are actually you know like see the big screen that is uh, that is the visual effects industry um for that the footage is not yet you know like uh, available as as you know like actors have <laughs> not yet come out to uh, yeah. shoot uh, full time so uh, because of that uh, the people who have been as an animator in the vfx industry are are slightly you know like um, uh, facing crisis mm-hmm. as of now um, i wouldn't say like a full on crisis but at the same time you know like a lot of people have misplaced their jobs and and you know, like uh, a lot of people a lot of companies are struggling to you know move forward in that front um, because of the lack of the footage you don't have a base mm-hmm. to build on uh, as far as the the cg industry goes i mean the animation industry goes uh, there on the there on everything is full on cg uh, for example our tv series for example the movies and the uh, dvd movies and all that stuff um i think uh, they are doing mm-hmm. rather well um because uh, what is happening is that um they have you know uh, to make story boards to make uh, to have story discussions to um uh, 
to send you know like uh, overseas because uh, most of this animation that that you know we see on TV is usually happening overseas right mm-hmm. and not right so um, they already were in a in a situation where you know they were actually delegating the work to another country so it was already going on in a uh, in an okay. online manner right to, to, to so to speak a country across country so uh, that sort of work is still going on well um, uh, people are still uh, you know like working I um, mean, yeah, but there, there is, you know, like the issue of work from home as of now. So uh, there, there is a certain delay probably um, in the mm-hmm. in the production. Uh, you know, it is not as as fast and as efficient as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, in an office setup. But then again, there is no, um, there is no, say, scarcity of work going around. Uh, I would say that because uh, it's been really. Um, Work is flowing in, man. I mean, for for all the CGI people, I mean, uh, for the basically the um, mm-hmm. animation people, uh, work is coming in. And uh, if not, then you know, like the people who are freelancing also, they are also getting a lot of opportunity, you know, to dip their fingers in multiple projects as of now, because uh, you know the freelance market yeah. is also being flooded. Um, as you know, like uh, for example, if uh, if uh, if a certain company, uh, you know, X Y Z company is being downsized or is being you know like not able to work on the on the full capacity mm-hmm. that it's supposed to. Uh, so what's happening is these freelance animators are coming in. Uh, they, they, you know, like the someone with contacts is, is distributing them, oh. work and, and the freelance animators are also thriving awesome. at this point. Uh, for the matter, uh, actually, since I am not, uh, I'm not traditionally okay. employed anywhere, so I'm also doing a little bit of contract work and freelance work. So yeah, I'm also doing, um, you know, some of the uh, um, some of the European projects and also awesome. coming in uh, with the help of, you know, uh, yeah, beautiful. Home, uh, so I think yeah, it's. Uh, for for animators, I think yeah. there's no issue. Um, but if you are if you're an animator and you're very focused on VFX and live action movies, then then this this there's an issue here because uh, because of the unavailability of, uh, of yeah. the live action footage. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's a sad thing happening right now because the I heard like some of the companies are laying off employees, and uh, yeah, all mm-hmm. because we can understand there is no work so. Uh, like companies can't keep uh, can't keep Absolutely. employees for so much uh, for so many months without any work so it's happening so better we have to like we have to equip ourselves mm-hmm. and start thriving for other opportunities there are opportunities in the animation field so yeah there is like there is yes. a huge opportunities as you as you told like there are huge opp- opportunities in the animation or in kind of cg mm-hmm. side so i i just want to ask like uh, when i started my uh, education or when I was doing my diploma in animation and visual effects uh, I was learning mm-hmm. Maya at that moment and now also I think mm-hmm. like Maya is the main software used in most of the companies but I heard like uh, there mm-hmm. is a boom as Unreal Engine is popping up like uh, it's completely changing the CG industry and also we have Blender on the other yeah. side which is like giving a lot of uh, like the content which is producing from blender is also like worth comparable with the maya with maya software so uh, what all are the main softwares used that used in the animation industry i mean in the studios so according to you you can share your view or you can share your knowledge about that yeah um so like you mentioned uh, maya is is you know like one of the dominant you know uh, animation software um, if I just talk about animation, right? Uh, if, we, if we go into the other aspects of multimedia, then you know, like there are different giants who you know dominate. Uh, for example, uh, modeling is nowadays you know usually done in ZBrush, um, and uh, when when we come for uh, VFX, it's it's uh, Houdini, mm-hmm. right? And then there's this new one. I'm sorry, I forgot its name, but it's also uh, latestly launched and uh, very good. So yeah, so Maya is predominantly for animation and rigging. That's what's mm-hmm. happening in the industry. Um, also, uh, if you take a look at it, um, the Autodesk revenue usually is is not uh, based on the Maya uh-huh. subscription and all. It's it's usually from their architectural front. Like you know, they, they have a big hold on the on the architectural uh, you know animation and, and uh, development okay. and all that stuff. Like you know, AutoCAD and, and all that stuff. So um, so it's it's a big share. It's uh, since the industry is small, the share of Maya is is big. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, um, it is a bit expensive. Um, as to go on for for people, uh, let's say uh, uh, a studio is starting up. For example, you and I, you know, like uh, you and I decide to open up a studio later. So for us, getting Maya subscription is going to be you know a headache because the network license and uh, and 
you know, all of that is, is a bit expensive for, for someone yeah. who's starting up, right? And uh, what happens is that at this point of time uh, and age, as you mentioned, you know, Unreal is, uh, mm-hmm. is catching up um, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that now we can do in game engines that we weren't, you know, usually uh, be able to do it earlier. All right. Um, so almost everything can be done in, in, in Unreal as well, from uh, taking from animation to you know like uh, um, this. But base software is, is still being used as either Maya or you know like um, Motion Builder or something like that. Um, so Maya has captured a share because it's been it's been predominantly used for a very long okay. time. So uh, whatever span of industry it is, I mean, it is a small uh, small span that this industry do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, if you take a look at it. Maya has captured, you know, Autodesk has captured a larger uh, audience, but uh, Blender is giving <laughs> a tough competition as of now. Uh, what's happening with the with the latest release of Blender 2.9? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, they literally like you know set the standards uh, really high, and um, uh, this time the cloth brush is is amazing. The simulations are are you know like fluid dynamics and simulations are are mind blowing. Right? Um, they have come up with uh, stackable, uh, you know. Um, um, the uh, bl- uh, stackable um, deformers mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So it, it's it's really you know like uh, now it's it's getting into that customized world where, where where if someone doesn't like its interface, can you know like just just change around with it, and you know we'll get a we'll get a interface that he or she you know they are mm-hmm. familiar with um, at this point of time. And also uh, yeah, they have also integrated you know um, uh, Nvidia graphics okay. for it. Uh, better this time. Uh, I mean, the CUDA graphics will work better. Uh, there's motion blur added in EV. Uh, you know, earlier there was no motion blur in EV much, um, uh, but uh, now they've added that. And uh, the Cycles render engine is always, you know, awesome as, as uh, it's low, but at the same time, it's, it gives a very precise, you know, uh, quality. So uh, yeah, Blender is giving, you know, competition mm-hmm. on all fronts. And to add, if even if the, it has some sort of, you know, uh, issues with it, obviously every software does, but it makes up with the fact that okay, it's yeah. free. All right, so Blender is, is okay. absolutely free. So um, the only thing probably you cannot use is their logo. Um, because you know, for that you need, I think you need to be a, a corporate oh. contributor. Uh, they have their, they have their uh, um, yeah, yeah. donation page where you can donate. You can, you can, you know, bronze, silver, gold, uh-huh. and then platinum, and then you okay. have your corporate. So uh, if you are corporate, then you can even use your logo, use uh-huh. their logo, you know, uh, in in your. Uh, um, uh, say whatever okay. work you're doing or, or you know like stuff like that so they give you that much freedom but other than that i think it's, it's everything is free whatever you make in it it's yours forever all right uh, nobody from lenders want to come and claim rights um you know like uh, you use our software you have to pay us money or something like that so mm-hmm. that being said and also with the investment of microsoft yeah. with the investment yeah, of yeah. unity in it all right and, and to really more people who are you know diving yeah. into uh into Blender, um, it's it's become one of the you know like rapidly growing. Um, you know, if you take a look at it and, and you know just type, uh, I would say like uh, seven years back, if you were to type <laughs> Blender tutorial, all right, just few people would come up with you know like uh, the people who were doing it for a long while. They would only those yeah. tutorials would come up. You know, uh, if right now you just type yeah, Blender yeah. and and then just it B L E, that's that's all you need to type, and then there's like a huge list of Blender 2.8, 2.2, 8.2, 2.83, 2.9 tutorials of, of more Modeling, texturing, lighting. So all of this, all of this, you know, um, there's a sudden boom of the of the mm-hmm. of the software, and uh, everybody's trying to cash in on that. And uh, yeah, it's it's really going to be you know the next uh, you know um, 3D software thing. And uh, I think um, the day isn't uh, you know far. I think by like uh, two, three more years, I think maximum, maximum, yeah, yeah, three years, and this will start overtaking and. Uh, the others have to do something. Yeah. Like, uh, really, so it's like, competitive, right? Yeah. Like Maya, whatever it is giving or yeah. providing, same thing we are we are able to achieve in Blender. Mm-hmm. So uh, even the individuals yes. are not preferring Maya now. So might be like companies mm-hmm. also will think in future, like why we have to invest so much in Maya if you are able to get somewhat yeah. the same kind of result from Blender. But do you think like in future Blender yeah. will start some mm-hmm. like uh, charging money or charging like a um, yearly subscription like that do you think like that could happen i mean um i'm no one to say uh-huh. that it won't 
but at the same time the community that blender has built is solely one on this basis that you know it's it's basically a community right it's not a company it's not a uh, i mean obviously you, you have to register it and you have to file taxes and all that stuff that that regular run of the mill work is yeah. there of company but then again it's basically a community mm-hmm. more than that so um I know what to say about their dis- uh, I mean, business uh, decisions. Maybe they might, maybe they might not. But I think they might not need to because if you take a look at it, um, you know, with all the all these people trying to you know like pour in their money and donating their technologies to it, um, you know, uh, for example, if if investment is happening, it it does not just happen with uh, with money only. So for example, think if uh, if say Unity or or Unreal or you know like. Um, um, Microsoft people, you know, they just donate one of their engineers to work on it okay. for a few months, right? Say, okay, you have an issue uh, with this, uh, our our software person can you know like come up and maybe fix it. Or if you want a new feature, we can lend a part of our feature oh. to you, all right? Make it yours. So we can make it available to the public, and also with the amount of funding that is happening, all right, um, uh, that uh, that you know, like Microsoft has put in money, as I told you, I know other other yeah. other companies, you know, these are just the giants I'm talking about, but there are other companies also yeah. that are investing in it, um, all right. So I think um, it's it's <laughs> questionable that they will, you know, like uh, I mean, maybe charge, but I think uh, we can be ninety percent mm-hmm. sure they won't. Uh, because uh, as the community grows and the, the, as the software grows, I think uh, people just pitch in, and I think this sort of community should not be monetized anymore. Um, and also, you know, um, as of now, I am not very, uh, you know, I'm, I don't have a regular source of income, so I am actually not donating <laughs> to Blender anything. But uh, as soon as I start making money, uh, I'm I'll be damn sure to you know like uh, put up at least be a bronze contributor to it, at least ten dollars or or at least one dollar or something, whatever I can do. From my side, I would definitely do it because um, it's it's really yeah. something um, that's yeah, of course, of course. the whole industry. Because the creative freedom is now yeah. with individuals, not with companies. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. If you if you're if you're a school kid, if you're a college kid, if you're you know like some other working professional or something, something you don't have a bit of money. All you have to do is you need just yeah. the internet, download that's render, it. That's it. After that, you yeah. Don't even even we have a lot of it. tutorials. You even like, have, you know, like I was not at all. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about Blender, but. I started now learning Blender because of the tutorials which you have told. Like there is a, a number of like plenty of mm-hmm. tutorials now available in YouTube uh, with various kind of techniques like for modeling, mm-hmm. for texturing, for rigging, for whatever. I mean there are a lot of tutorials for mm-hmm. simulation kind of stuffs also available in Blender. So yeah. now it's very easy for us to learn Blender as well as install Blender because it is absolutely free. So I, I, we could see yes. some revolution here after definitely. So absolutely, and uh, and we can see, uh, you know, uh, if we, if we, if we are, you know, like when we when on the topic of saying that uh, when you said like other 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 companies mm-hmm. have to cope up, uh, they really have to do because uh, you know, like for example, let's take uh, let's take Autodesk, right? So Autodesk has short yeah, if, yeah. if you're familiar with that, um, that's their uh, that's their you know like uh, management kind of production uh, management, yeah, yeah, management, yeah, sorry, kind management of, production, yeah. uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. tracking system. All right. So uh, what's happening is that now Autodesk is actually uh, pushing to their major, uh, you know, um, all of the major uh, major buyers okay. out there. Um, for example, all the animation giants and all mm-hmm. those who are use and uh, use my my uh, and Autodesk uh, Autodesk products. So they're actually pushing shotgun either at a very cheaper price or you know like free. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, so I I wouldn't want to oh. quote me on this. But uh, what's happening is that so uh, they are trying to um, you know. Um, Get the production system handled from there. And so what is happening is that you know uh, if a client and the and the and the um, um, and the work and the and the workforce they both you know using shotgun to you know like sync with each other. So and shotgun uh, is usually used for Autodesk products only, right? So what happens is that once you set mm-hmm. a pipeline yeah. in 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 uh, in that you know um, got it. Uh, yeah. In shotgun, all right. So uh, what will happen is you will have to use Autodesk mm-hmm. because what will happen is that you know uh, instead of investing too much in yeah. a new pipeline system, all right, uh, they are taking care of the oh, pipeline issue, right. all right. So they are giving you uh, giving you an already fixed pipeline, all right. Like you can customize it, obviously. But at the same time, they're like we're giving you a pipeline that you can customize. You know, you can work it yeah. out for yourself, all right. Uh, the only condition is that it will only work on Autodesk product. So. 
I guess then people who are already using Autodesk product will obviously you know get to it uh, because a customized uh, pipeline is already yeah. been given to you. And once you know like uh, once you get hooked to that, once you once you start you know uh, your journey in that in that pipeline. You know, it it is very hard for any company to scrap yeah. their pipeline and yeah. put in a new one. It takes a lot of money, mm-hmm. a lot of effort. So I think, uh, yeah. So I think that way, Autodesk is kind of like moving <laughs> forward. Um, you know, to secure yeah. their holdings. Uh, but uh, as of now, it, they don't have a big threat, man. I don't, I don't think that's yeah. the, that's the case. But if it does comes to that, then I'm pretty sure that they have their corporate strategies. They will come up new, with yeah. Um, yeah, kind company. of new yes. techniques. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have dropped their uh, they brought their student license. No, like uh, I think uh, for one year, if you're a student or a teacher, you get a free oh. software of any sort. Uh, yeah, I recently, uh, you know, I wanted to okay. motion for video. every Autodesk so product I, they're giving. I've actually registered. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, good. Actually, yeah. actually. So, uh, so I actually downloaded Mo- Motion Builder from Autodesk website uh, with proper license for one year because I wanted hey, to learn fine. Motion Builder. I used to work on it in my in my company uh, back then, uh, but it was like years ago, right? So I just know how it works, but yeah. I really don't know like how it works, mm-hmm. like you know, like all that stuff. So uh, it's free one year one year license is free. I'm actually learning for free. Oh, that's Autodesk. fantastic. So that is something yeah, yeah, good of course. that you know, like yeah. put in because uh, one year is one year is pretty of much course, enough of course. for you to you know like of course. any course and. And is, is there any major yeah. limitations for that version? No, actually, I haven't oh, seen anything that's amazing, yeah. now. Uh, but at the same time, at the same time, um, I haven't touched motion building okay. for a while now. So I, if if I download okay, Maya like that, like, uh, yeah. you know, if, if I if I went for a student's coverage subscription of Maya, I would yeah. definitely. There might be some uh, limitations, I guess, I because a, like people can miss it. Yeah, there might be, but. <laughs> Yeah. But this is a yeah, good news. Like students who wants to learn something, they can download and simply learn the software mm-hmm. without any uh, money spending. So that's a good news. Thanks, man. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely, man. absolutely. That's one of the major concerns. Yeah, one of the major yeah. concerns of students, right? Because uh, with education getting expensive everywhere, um, you know, it's hard to pay the fees for what you're learning at the same time. You know, like buy a software. Or yeah, a software that's well. that's a good. One. Um, that's so the next question is like uh, what is your experience of working in an international studio in some of the international projects um yeah that is if if by international you mean moving out of india then the answer is no because i never okay. moved out of india but i have worked okay. in mnc company um i i used to work in mm-hmm. technical um all right and then i transitioned to eccentric studios eccentric is a, is yeah, a no, international company now we have uh, yeah. Yeah, they have uh, opened up in Philippines as well, so um, yeah, I think and mm-hmm. in some other place. Um, so they are actually turning into an MNC. But uh, yeah, so these are the two companies. But uh, all the projects I worked on were yeah. all international. Uh, they were they were hardly any domestic project. I don't think there was any mm-hmm. domestic yeah. project when I worked in. Uh, it was all basically uh, based okay. on US clients. Uh, most mm-hmm. of it was US clients. Uh, some was Italian, oh. some was French, uh, but everything was international. That's for sure. So I can I can say you know in that that uh, in a production setup, right? Let's be let's be honest. In a production setup, uh, it isn't actually that different um, if you're working on an international project or if you're working on a domestic project because um, the deadlines are that mm-hmm. deadlines, right? Um, and also at the same time, um, it basically depends on what sort of mm-hmm. group you're working with rather than what sort of project you're working on because the project might be amazing but but uh, but if your um, if your manager or if your team you know like uh, are not enthusiastic about it or, or they suck basically so it's it's it mm-hmm. becomes hell to work in such a great project yeah. right so uh, thankfully most of the projects that i worked on uh, people were pretty enthusiastic about it uh, some they were not uh, even i was not because you know um, they, they really didn't mm-hmm. match my style right. um, like I have a I have a particular style of animation and I like to be around that. Um, when it when it deviates too much from there, um, you know, uh, basically to go into something of a very uh, preschool mm-hmm. category, um, you know, at that point in time, you know, production time is squeezed because mm-hmm. the budget is less, and you know, like and the client actually doesn't want much uh, refined animation. They actually want a lot of loud movements to you know because the kids yeah. are watching. Yeah. All preschool kids, right? So uh, for that, so those sort of uh, one or two projects, like I can I can hardly you know, count it on a single single finger. One or two project um, is is like that. But other than that, it was a really fun experience actually. And uh, sometimes you know you get recorded videos uh, uh, mm-hmm. from the client, 
explaining what's 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 wrong in our shot or how we can improve oh. the shot. Um, and I I got a got a really nice you know um, experience to work with uh, Ken Ken from uh, oh. DreamWorks. He was the animation supervisor in DreamWorks in the in the eleventh floor in DDU DreamWorks oh, nice. unit. So um, there was at that point of time, writers of work was going on. After the How Did You Write oh, okay. movie, uh, they actually made a made a made a TV series, and then they released okay. the second sequel. All right. So um, before the second part came in, we all knew the the uh, the name of the <laughs> dragons. All right, because in the first part, the dragon only one person was named. Other than that, no one else was named. So we know that uh, that you know like uh, Meat Log and uh, and you know like Stormfly. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. already know because of that. So. Um, so uh, that was when you know, like I I I met Ken and he was a very interesting character actually. Um, he used to review our shots. Uh, you know, he used to call us in the cabin and mm-hmm. used to review our shot. Very fun guy. You know, always talking, oh, yeah. smile, hi, hello, and all that stuff. So um, I learned a lot from him. Basically, like uh, what what a DreamWorks supervisor basically sees in, okay. a, in a shot. You know, um, uh, because I I had this this feeling that you know the shot has to be technically right to be to mm-hmm. be approved. Because that's what how we were taught. We were taught, you know, like uh, the the body mechanics should be uh, should be proper. The the uh, you know the timing should be right. The over over you know like the overshoot, the settle, the the uh, overlap, everything should be there and all mm-hmm. that stuff and stuff. But nobody actually you know like pushed us towards the performance okay. of it. So when I asked Ken, I was like, uh, you know, hey Ken, you know, I I saw that you approved mm-hmm. one of my shots. Uh, and which I actually didn't put that much work, all right? But it got approved. But in this one, I put so much of my work. You know, it was a flying shot actually. It was a flying shot, and you know, uh, Astrid was falling down and pick up, caught her with one hand, it on flying on dragon, and then try to push her back up and all that stuff. So I was like, so I've done this shot, and uh, and I've, I've you know like I've invested a lot of time. I know because I rushed yeah. that shot to do more work on this shot and and then he just looked at me and he said I said then how do you approve that and you know are you giving so much rating on this so he just like he said in that shot hiccup looked like a hiccup right in this shot hiccup is flawless in you know body mechanics I mean it, I mean obviously he was being okay. generous because there's no way that for a streamer supervisor a two year or two year you know like experienced person mm-hmm. the shot looks flawless but he was being he was being really uh, you know um, Really generous, and he was like, uh, "This this hiccups body mechanics looks flawless, but he is okay. not hiccup. Like he doesn't look like a he's not behaving like hiccup. Like he's behaving like some other macho <laughs> man or something, you know, um, who's not afraid, who who is not you know scared easily or something like that. Hiccup is really scared easily, but he he is courageous, so he still puts on a face and you know like fights back. That's when I realized that oh, okay, so this is how this is how filmmakers see, all right? This is how they they." Um, Okay. Yeah. Movie, all right, and, and that's 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 when it clicked. Like, if this character looks like this character or behaves like this character, then the shot is approved. Because he says that because it's gonna come on a TV on a, or mm-hmm. like in a TV series, there are rarely few people who will download TV series yeah, and you know, like keep on watching it yeah. again and again to see the difference. It's gonna come one time in the frame, and at that point in time, no matter how good your body mechanics is, if your character doesn't behave like the character, yeah, it doesn't matter. Understood. So. That's that's exactly what he said, and that was an eye-opener <laughs> yeah. moment. And and I have had much many moments like that in, yeah. in my career. Um, so that is that is one thing about working in international of course, politics. Of course. You know, uh, you work with people who've been in the industry yeah. for a very long time, who've probably worked with the companies like DreamWorks, yeah. Disney in their, in their career. Even and, the, and, you know, like once the name yeah. comes from there, it yeah, even the same so passion which we have. So it will be like very much fortunate yeah. to work with those people who have the same passion like mm-hmm. us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. I l- I just want to ask like uh, you have shared your experience working in an international studio and I know that you have been successful working for a long time uh, in a studio. So according to you like yeah. what are the qualities needed for an artist or who uh, uh, for a student who mm-hmm. wants to be successful in the industry uh, this this advice should be for a person who wants to step into the animation industry. Yeah, Manoj. So there is there is this thing that you know um, the word success is is basically you know it's it's pretty defined to each person. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. A few people, um, for them you know like some dream company is is success. A few yeah. people you know like something they want is success, and then you know, like, mm-hmm. um, starting their own business or something like that. So um, 
as far as I know that if, if you're asking to you know like successfully enter the studio and and, and survive nicely, yeah. um, I think for that I have I have uh, I have a few experience and all that. So yeah, I that's what I share with uh, yeah. the people. So um, the first thing that that I think that uh, the youth of today, right, um, you know, um, present present company included, right, the youth of today is is uh, basically you know struggling is the fact that is self confidence, right? Um, they they really think that you know um, when they when they join the industry they're not very informed about the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so my my advice to everyone is uh, find someone on LinkedIn who's been working as an animator for a while, you know, who's uh, and and uh, who's humble enough to answer your questions. Right? Yeah. Um, it will be a little bit you know some lot of people won't and uh, won't you know like uh, might not. And, and uh, entertain that that questions or might not, but then it's your duty to you know like keep asking other people, all right? Um, so for example, I get a lot of lot of comments from uh, a lot of questions from you know like people who are just entering the industry. They like uh, they start with hi sir, all right? First thing is I, I hate the word sir, right? I I like literally abhor the word sir, so uh, I don't like that culture. So they are like sir, how you know like I want to join here, I want to work here. How do you think is it's possible? Uh, what sort of deal should I make? What of this so that tells me that there is something fundamentally wrong with the with the education that's been provided on a larger scale yeah you know uh, in our country because if if the education was provided properly you know if they were educated well about the industry uh, i don't think they will be asking such questions <laughs> right they will know uh, you know like these are the these are the entering terms and you know like they won't ask such basic questions as in what should i make in a demo reel uh, they won't be like you know what should yeah. i uh, how do I even uh, you know apply in this company, or how do I even you know like uh, know if I'm worth applying in this company? So all of that you know like they have a they have a lot of self worth issues, right? Uh, and they and some of their work is really good actually, right? yeah. uh, but but they don't have the confidence to sell it. So uh, I would say that you know like talk to people even when you're studying. There's no harm in talking to people in the industry. You know. Um, because what happens is when uh, usually they keep on studying, all right, and once they finish the course, once they start to look for a job, mm -hmm. is then when they start to approach people, all right. And by the time it might have already been a lot of damage might have been done. So when you're when you're getting into the industry, before getting into the industry, see if you can you know like talk to someone uh, from the industry because uh, people think that who will put in that much effort. And I'm <laughs> asking you if you won't put that much effort, like mm -hmm. who else will, right? Yeah. Because it's it's gonna be your future. Um, so I would say connect with people, connect with uh, industry professionals, ask them questions. You don't have to ask Jamal Bradley. Okay, he's not going to respond. All right, he's too busy. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you you can't ask like Glenn Key. You can't ask uh, uh, you know um, Alan Blaze. You you can't ask these legends because they're too busy. Right. So what you can do is you can ask someone who who is probably you know working as an animator in your state or you know in the companies that you've heard of. All right, or or just has a title of senior animator or mid level animator or animation supervisor or something or something. Just ask them, but ask them politely. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, yeah. do not intrude their their uh, their <laughs> privacy. Do not and do not irritate them. Yeah. Right? but ask them gently. Uh, give them the time to respond. All right, if they take a week, if they say they, they'll get back to you and they take a week or so. After two weeks, just just put in another message saying uh, a gentle reminder. Could you please you know like reply to my question? I'm telling you, ninety nine percent people will reply. Yeah. Right, and they will help you, but you also need to know what to ask questions. Mm, that's right? the thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the main thing that our our uh, you know like our animation students don't know. They usually come and ask like what shop what software should I study, all right? Or you know like which one is better, Maya or Blender, all right? All these existential questions they ask like you know like uh, they might as well ask me what is God, all right? Or should we believe in God or not or something like that? Because <laughs> the answer to that doesn't matter actually. Yeah. The what questions need to be asked? They need to be educated on what questions need to be asked. For example, um, like what 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 am I supposed to put in my demo? It's a good question. It's a very broad term, question, but it's yeah. a good question, mm -hmm. right? Um, at the same time, uh, you know, um, where can I study right? yeah. animation? Where do you think is 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 good for animation? Should I go to a, an actual you know physical institute? Uh, learn there, physical college or institute? Okay. Uh, learn there, or should I do online courses? Are you know uh, are the degree courses worth it? Uh, are yeah. they not? Should I pursue degree somewhere else or should I not? You know, or probably you know like do degree in arts and then do animation from some online course or something like that. Uh -huh. So all of these questions they are not able to ask because nobody is coaching them on this. 
Yeah, right? that's right. Nobody is telling them, you know, like uh, if you want to come into animation industry, there is a lot of there is a ton of ways you can actually learn cost efficiently and from industry professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. All right. So I think, uh, yeah, the first advice that I would like to give to people who want to come into the industry and want to be successful and all that stuff is that start connecting with people. All right. Just talking to your mentors or just talking to your you know teachers or whatever you want to call them you know an institute or whatever right mm-hmm. uh, if just talking to them or just talking to you know like a, 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 your friends or something won't actually pan out because you have to connect reach out and connect to the industry all right um, in in abroad there is this uh, you know um, for example like just take a look of Komon and 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 Van Gogh Film School and all that stuff all right yeah, yeah. they teach they teach. Uh, with the help of industry professionals from, yeah. from artists who are actually from working in the yeah. and you know like, yeah. yeah disney and all those all those people who already worked you know on movies so um, all those people are being called upon to teach right so that 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 level of confidence when you start interacting itself with someone from the industry all right is something that is missing in, in our, indian in culture our, you know, yeah of course in, in an education system i think yeah even uh, i feel that when animation and multimedia is concerned so um, so that that is one of the biggest issue, and I think the only way to negate that we have right now, uh, only way to negate that is is to you know like uh, is to talk to industry professional. I mean, there's LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. All the industry professionals are in LinkedIn. All right, no, tell me who is it? All right, if he's is that person is stupid. All right, yeah, because. <laughs> Because Manoj, you are in LinkedIn. You 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 sought me out through LinkedIn. Okay? Yeah, of we course. We connected through LinkedIn, and yeah. if you're doing this, it's all because of LinkedIn. LinkedIn, right? yeah. And not a single penny we spent on LinkedIn, <laughs> right? Mm. It's absolutely free. Yeah. Right? So get on to LinkedIn. All right. Uh, start. Don't don't see your education as just education. See it as you want to. If this is what will take you somewhere. You know where you want to go. All right. So unless and until your basement is strong, your building still will be weak. All right. So, um, so talk to industry professionals. All right. Some people will be rude. I agree. All right. Not everybody, you know, is is the same. But a lot of people will genuinely help you out. Just don't yeah. be irritating or don't be you know, <laughs> like too upfront or you know like try to get all the answers from one single guy. All right. Don't do that. Yeah. Ask out to multiple people. Reach out to multiple people. And you know like uh, and who knows? You might actually find a find a mentor. Of course. You know. Yeah, because that's how you find mentors. You, mm-hmm. you go out to people, you get out of your own way and start talking to people and say like, hey, I am, if you don't ask for help, they will not help you. They don't mm-hmm. even know you You need help. So let them know that you need help. Ask them a question. All right. Get out of your com- comfort zone and please don't be, uh, you know, like uh, what we call in, uh, in, you know, like in Sanskrit, it's poop manduk. That is, you know, like a, a, a frog in a well. Right? <laughs> A frog in a well thinks this is the world, all right? Yeah. It doesn't get out. It doesn't know anything, all right? So don't be that, okay? Um, this this was not something that was told to me. And when I was studying, there was no LinkedIn. There was uh, not any online presence going on. Yes. Right? But now it is. I, I fully intend to exploit it, and I fully I'm I'm actually through this through this video of yours. I'm actually giving a full welcome to all the all the industry, you know, like uh, um, freshers uh-huh. or, or students to you know like reach out to me, ask me whatever you yeah, want to yeah. ask. Maybe I will be late in replying, but I will reply to your questions, right? Uh, yeah. Because I really want, and please ask good questions, right? Don't ask questions like, uh, like you know, what should I study, Maya or Max or you know, like <laughs> this or that, right? Don't don't ask me that, but ask me something <laughs> that you really want to do, right? Yeah. That's my main motive actually. Uh, doing this video, mm-hmm. I might guide yes. some students or. Uh, some artists who generally want to learn a lot of things about animation or CG. Absolutely. So I'm just guiding Absolutely. those people into your channel or your LinkedIn profile so that yeah. like uh, their career advice, everything will be uh, taken care of you because you have lots of information, lots of knowledge about the industry. So by mm-hmm. my main motive of this interview is for them, the people yeah. who wants to like uh, know more about or have some doubts regarding these things. So I might mm-hmm. like this video can solve those things. So uh, is, this yep. gonna, is this gonna help us in long run? Uh, because you no, know, today or tomorrow we are both gonna you know like climb up the ladder. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if we we are we are you know if we have been in this industry for this long, we are not just doing it for fun. All right, like if this we have actually seen it as a career. We want to grow in this career as well. So there will be a point when I'll be supervising. I'm I'm currently supervising, but but it's more of a contract freelance thing. So I actually don't meet the people I'm supervising. Mm-hmm. I just give the retakes to the shot, and it's, it just goes to that person. But 
in in future okay we we are going to get you know like uh, you know people under us will be working with us right so at that point of time we want the talent pool to be good right we we won't have time to train them at that point of time so okay. if they come out well trained all right the, yeah. the entire industry will lift itself you know uh, like like a like a well you know coordinated uh, uh, this thing what do you call it? how uh, how a forklift lifts right from all directions yeah. like that they will be able to lift themselves got it and it's really nice uh, you know because once they are updating right then we also will have to update because if we have to lead those people yeah. all right if we have to you know like guide those people if we have, if we have to be you know like the in the leading position for those guys we have to be updated as well so we'll also you know learn something new and and not just it won't be just one way street of communication like it won't be like only me and you teaching them will be they will also teach us back something mm-hmm. new yeah. all right and that's 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 everything in this industry all right yeah. so when you when you see bright faces coming towards you then then that's that's nice otherwise yeah. if, if they are you know like they don't have the knowledge the skill or the or the confidence then what is what is the joy in, in leading a, such a team yeah right? got it yeah so let's like let's move to the next question like yeah. <clears throat> now uh, basically there are two i mean according to me there is two two kind two kind of animation <clears throat> sorry mm-hmm. basically yeah. i know like there is two kind of animation is there 2d and 3d animation mm-hmm. so what is your yeah. view about 2d and 3d animation and uh, from here onwards like everything is shifting to uh, online or uh, kind of mm-hmm. cg thing so which mm-hmm. one has a bright future here after uh, here after like 2d or 3d yeah it's uh, okay so um it's basically like comparing apples and oranges because <laughs> both of them are fruits all right yeah. but at the same time you know uh, apple has its has a certain you know taste and has its certain fan following and so does orange all right and certain uses and, and okay and yeah got it so um so both of them are equally important i mean uh, if you take a look at netflix plus plus Right, mm-hmm. um, they have come up with the way in which you know, like usually what people do is they make 3D and they may try to make it look like 2D, right? They make 2D and they try to make it look like 3D, and they and they did a job that is you know like fantastic. I am personally bummed that they didn't get the Oscar. They got oh. nominated, but they didn't get the okay. Oscar, mm-hmm. and I I literally you know like felt really bad. I love that movie. Uh, so when I tell you this that uh, 2D or 3D, actually I think the future is more with the hybrid. Okay. Uh, if you take a look at uh, you know uh, Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I saw uh, the amazing you know the, yeah. the Spider Verse yeah. movie, right? Uh, the the amount of detail they put in. I mean, it was 3D, but there was so many 2D elements in that. Okay, yeah. That you know, like it looks so visually appealing. Yeah, it was an new experience. Yeah. yeah. If if you look at Klaus, all right, Klaus is totally different because it looks like it's 3D, but it's actually everything is hand drawn, all right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they did a lot of you know like a technical big big two for for lighting it in 3D, all right, um, and all that stuff uh, to make to make lighting in such a way that it looks like 3D. Even though when when our light is shining from behind, uh, you know the su- subsurface scattering that oh. that happens, you know, in the ear and all that stuff where the light passes through and it shows as red. Okay, they did all of that in 2D itself, all right. so it was it was a visual treat to watch that mm-hmm. and uh, and with the blender grease pencil coming in all right mm-hmm. the the level of detail and the level of malleability that that blender grease pencil has and adaptability and, and uh, there are a few you know like uh, huge few short films that are done entirely in blender oh. and they've used 3d and 2d elements both together yeah. so uh, those sort of fusion right mm-hmm. i think it's time that we start doing that fusion you know because because you know like i i know there are there is there is a specific appeal to an entirely 3d movie there is a specific appeal to an entirely <laughs> 2d movie but but we need to join forces man i mean i mean it, that way we we'll get to learn 3d people will get to learn so much from 2d and mm-hmm. 2d people will get to learn you know how how difficult it or something is 3d because we both have a we both have like a very uh, um, the people who haven't done 2d people who haven't done 3d right they both have a very conflicting image about Mm-hmm. for them it's like uh, you know like uh, it's pretty easy for you because you know like you can maintain volume you can you can put 360 degree camera and you really have don't have to do anything you know like the volume and the proportion software takes care of it okay. yes it does but at the same time 3d models don't look good in certain angles in certain lightings all right mm-hmm. so we have to figure out a way to do that properly all right there is something there are some shapes which can be exaggerated in 2d but cannot be done in 3d because of because of physical limitations of the mesh 
right? Um, and the budget constraint because uh, because no matter how good you do the rigging, there is a certain budget to the rigging, right? Okay. Uh, you cannot exceed yeah, that. Yeah, of course. So uh, for that and and for two D and for and for three D people, they're like ah, two D animator can do everything, man. He can do <laughs> effects, he can do lighting, he can do everything. You know, they really don't uh, you know um, need to struggle with so much technical difficulties. You know, uh, file crashing and uh, yeah. and you know like. Uh, uh, let's say you know um, some sort of server down or something like that. They don't yeah. have to you know worry about that. They just have to you know like hand paint it, and, and that is also ignorant because uh, nowadays most of the 2D work is happening digitally, right? They also have the file crash issues. They also have the you know like uh, all sort of technical issues that comes up. But obviously it's different. But so so I say that amalgamation is is basically the future. And and as you ask for like you know online. Uh -huh. uh, everything is turning into online and you know like work from home and all that stuff uh -huh. i think uh, i think it will be even better uh, you know if, if both the both of them you know like kind combined, of combined yeah. together because here the 3d person will work and send it to goody guy he will draw on top of it all right and then you know send it to the other <laughs> department yeah. and uh, it will be really great man. Uh, it will be awesome so um, yeah and also we will we'll find out people who are you know we'll have to come up with people who are good at both because otherwise then they won't be able to guide either one right yeah it happens in every industry like uh, we need people with multiple talents exactly exactly <laughs> yeah so so uh, what is your view about working in overtime or stressful studios i mean some people are really afraid of stressful work in overtime so uh, i know some people who get into the industry and just leave the job because of this overtime and stress so you have yeah. any general advice for those kind of issues uh, people facing those kind of issues to motivate them yes the i would say you know um when record a video of yourself or write it down somewhere where it's accessible to you right mm -hmm. the reason why you joined this industry <laughs> yeah. The the main the main reason why people quit is not because of the stress. It's not because of uh, it's because of the work hours. It's, it's it's because they were ready for that. They knew the risk while they were coming in. All right. The the reason is that their their dream is not being fulfilled in the place that they wanted. All right. And they just yeah. think that this is the end. This is the end of the road. All right. And they just quit. Okay. So um, I would say that you know. Um, Let me uh, once again just give me a second to collect my thoughts. I just want to put it into words of what am I feeling as of now. Um, no problem. It's not that they don't want to put the effort. It's that their effort is not, you know, um, giving them back the satisfaction they thought they will get out of the work. That's mm -hmm. the main reason of people quitting. Actually. Yeah. And one of the one of the sad truth about our industry is that validation. within the within the organization is a very rare thing to see mm -hmm. right yeah. um, because they will give you awards they will give you this thing and all that stuff but but at the end of the day you know nobody will actually come and ask you like how you doing nobody actually comes and ask you you know um uh like uh yeah, you're not being productive can yeah, do something to you know this this lack of empathy and that's 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 more the corporate right yeah. and uh, and i think that runs rampant in a in a in a service sector industry because because everybody has to answer to a boss <laughs> right and nobody really wants to you know like give an excuse so everybody you know like is overworked over there and uh, and people artists artists does not quit because it it's too much work artists quit because there's there's no validation for his work that's mm -hmm. when an artist you know like kind of gets fed up and quits quits just art all together all right it's it's multiple reasons so uh for the people who quit the job because of that uh, you know if you if you see if you're stressed if you have a lot of work all right if you if you're overworked if you're stressful and all that stuff then there's always an option to quit this job and go to somewhere else <laughs> yeah because because and people might say it's easier for you to say it's not easier for us because we are probably we have you know a kid on the way probably we have you know like uh, loans on the way all right we have emis to fill and uh, and i i simply say this to that so you can pick one of the two battles all right so yeah. either you can you know um, either you can look for the financial stability you're looking for all right and treat it treat this as any other job or if you want the artistic satisfaction then you have to take the risk of right? course and calculated risk i'm not saying just quit your job on like save some money all right get a get another job which is secure all right mm -hmm. um, get another secure another job and then quit this job all right Got and it. if you're talented if you're really talented i don't think 
Yeah. Everyone will say no to you for a for a job. Yeah. All right. No and one can. Uh, yeah. No one can survive without passion in this industry at least. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So it's if something is killing your passion. All right. Yeah. And that's the reason you're quitting. Then please, please, you know, quit that if that place that you're working in, quit that company or studio or whatever you're working in. All right. Don't quit your dreams. Uh huh. Because right. because once you look back, you know, and and you know, like once you go into some other field, and you know, like, uh, uh, and obviously, if this is your passion, you will be frustrated in that field also. <laughs> All right. So there there actually is no escape from this. The only escape from this is that you know, um, find validation somewhere else in your work. For example, uh, let me tell you, uh, it wasn't always easy for for me to be validated for my work. Uh huh. You know. Um, so at at some point in time, I really started to feel that I am not a very good animator. I am, you know, like I I maybe I'm not that good of an animator. Maybe nobody is praising my work, right? And and it's not also you know like being a baby. Like you know, it's not like being being narcissistic that you you want someone to say that your work looks good. It's it's the basic core principle of of being an artist. You want to express yourself and make someone else feel what you want to feel, right? So when that sort of feeling is not reciprocated back, it becomes really, really hard for an artist to just move on. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. this happened to me, and then what I what I did was uh, I I made a made a short you know like a short a body mechanic short for myself. Uh, that you know two characters are fighting, one character mm-hmm. has super speed, one character has super strength. And you know stuff, stuff like that. And even though everybody around me in the office, to whoever I'm sure, they said that it's it's good, it's really nice. I I didn't believe in myself, itself, <laughs> right? So one of my friend actually told me, why don't you release that outside, right? You know, you clearly don't value our opinion, right? <laughs> so why don't you put it somewhere where you know you probably will, you know, take a look at it. So I I did that. I took his advice. He was actually junior to me, so oh. I took his advice. And um, you know, I we he told me this in Chennai, in Marina Beach. Actually, we're sitting in the uh-huh. beach, okay. and then uh, he told me this. I I actually went for there, and he was coincidentally he was also there, so we met there. And he told me that you know, um, why don't we do this? And with the sound of the waves and the wind and the and his words, it actually resonated with me. So I did it. I went back home and I published it in YouTube. Uh, sorry, not YouTube. I I published it in on LinkedIn. Ah, right? great and, platform. And that's. That's it, and then you know, like the the next day I wake up, it already has like six uh, hundred likes. It already had like sixty comments. It had like you know, uh, twelve shares, seven shares, all right. And and people were sharing it, saying that I wish I could animate like this one day. And it was it was really mind blowing. Yeah, it was a push you need. And then I found out, and yeah, and then I found out that that you know, um, this. I was searching validation somewhere else <laughs> where they didn't have the time to validate my work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. then I put it on to the people. To I put it on to the masses, and then they started, you know, like reciprocating back. A lot of people gave me, uh, gave me, you know, critiques that were actually worthwhile. Right. I started doing that. I started, you know, like doing more and more and putting it out there in the in the market for people to see. And, I used to and see and I, like that. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you, man. And then suddenly, for, because of people like you, I started getting you know followers. I started getting you know a sort of a few people were actually you know saying that I'm actually a fan. Uh-huh. And I was like, that is that is sort of sort of uh, an, an experience that I never had. All right, and no matter how many, and I've actually delivered some really good shows. All right, I've actually led some good shows. All right, um, I've, I've actually led a few episodes. All right, as well, I, I was leading it. Okay. I was working, and at the same time, I was leading as well. So I was doing so much work, but I was I was getting so little in return that I felt I actually maybe I'm not that much worth. All right, but when I put it out, my work, yeah. right, I I started seeking validation. I started seeking, you know, um, uh, seeking uh, guidance or motivation somewhere else. Yeah, and guidance somewhere else. They actually delivered, and when my confidence level just shot up, right, and and then I I started connecting with people who you know who I probably thought oh this guy is too big shot he might not connect with me or she might not connect with me and okay. I sent a connection request and they were happy <laughs> to connect. Yeah, but I mean LinkedIn is the I perfect like, place for that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and, and I was like, what is going on? Like, why why <laughs> this is the, why is Glenn Wilpo accepting my request? Like Glenn Wilpo, the legendary you know uh, artist. Why is he accepting my request? <laughs> why why is Alan Blaze accepting my request? Like, what is going on? In, 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 am I am I? I started to pinch myself. Am I really doing this? I mean, this is a dream. Because 
we you know like uh, we uh, we only build our self worth from the reflection of what people show us yeah yeah right? correct and if they show us encouragement you know we will put in if we will double down on our work we will find a way to you know like deliver out to ourselves every day but if the people around you are not noticing you no matter mm-hmm. how much work you put in yeah. it just becomes a job it just becomes it becomes a lifeless thing to move on and you know and and that is the reason why people quit i don't think it's it's uh, i think it will be you know um, it will be actually be wrong to say that people quit because of the work pressure that's just the thing that they see from the outside the yeah. inner thing that they are missing is the validation is the is the dream being killed that you know uh, they wanted to do something all right yeah. but they are not being let because of so many creative constraints all right because so many uh, because the clients want it in specific way all right or the or or you know you want to put something but you don't have the time because the deadline is so squeezed uh-huh. so it's it's partly the reason is overworking but it's not the work it's basically the 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 environment that that you know it becomes like a work and instead of a artistic contribution yeah. i think that's why people leave. simply we can so, uh, like tell like lack yeah. of passion yeah not not exactly lack of we cannot tell lack of passion mm-hmm. it's just that the passion is being killed it is being smothered <laughs> that's the that's the one of the main reason yeah right? got it uh, and i am not, not saying suggestly for for the for the companies that i worked in it's just that throughout you know i'm seeing this this as a pattern you know mm-hmm. like a lot of people yeah, yeah. i know are you know like at, at, at you know like coach of quitting you know yeah. and saying that i i you know like i'm going to back to my back to handle my dad's business or you know i'm <laughs> going back to my hometown probably i will do a, open up you know like a video editing shop mm-hmm. over there or something yeah, like that yeah, and it's sad to see because they're really good animators they're really good lighting artists they're really good compositors uh, who are you know like quitting on 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 their dreams So I think it's it's with the work culture itself that needs to change, not just our attitudes. Mm-hmm. Got it. You know, amazing. Our attitude also needs to change, but also with the work culture. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So I just want to ask, like, uh, if you want to suggest some study materials or some websites, your favorite websites that can help upcoming students or artists. Uh, 